One of the mistakes I used to make all too often when editing my landscapes was thinking that the more contrast and the more saturation I add, the more my images would pop. And that is kind of true in one way, but not necessarily a good way, because what makes a landscape pop in a natural and subtle way is adding and enhancing depth and separation between elements to make it feel like you can step right into the scene. And one way to enhance depth in this way is to follow the general rule that elements near the camera are more saturated than those that are far away. So again, this is a general rule. So in this video, I'm sharing a clip from my dynamic landscape editing toolkit course, where I show you how to create a saturation mask to enhance the separation between foreground and background in a landscape scene. So looking at this image, we can see this is another classic example of how the light drops off as you get towards, uh, you know, into the distance. And also you can see it, the warm sunlight hitting these trees in the foreground is a lot more saturated and a lot more, you know, this tree is a much higher contrast than basically what the equivalent is in the background here, because, you know, this is the same sun hitting the same kind of trees off in the distance. The only real difference is that there's a lot more of them in the background. The reason why these ones in the foreground stand out already is because they are closer. So what I'm going to do is show you a technique for saturating the colors that are already the most saturated in the foreground here. What we're going to be looking at is essentially creating a saturation mask. Now the first step in that is using um, a selective color adjustment layer. Now we need to go through each of these colors here. So from red down to magenta, we're going to do the same thing. So selecting red, we're going to slide the black slider all the way to zero. We'll go through, do that. Yellows, we'll go down to minus 100, or I think I said zero a second ago, minus 100. Um, from zero to minus 100 on greens, cyans, blues, magentas. Now with whites, we're going to go to 100. Neutrals, we're going to go to 100. And blacks, we're going to go to 100. And just make sure that you've got the absolute radial uh, option ticked there, not relative. Uh, and essentially what we've got now is a black and white version of the image where the brighter parts are the most saturated areas in the image. And this kind of also confirms what we talked about a minute ago with the fact that it's more saturated in the foreground than in the distance. What you can do at this point, so you don't have to go and go through all these steps every time, is um, click this little thing here and save the selective color preset. So when you do that, you'll get a chance just to you know, pop up the, the default folder in Photoshop's options or Photoshop's folder somewhere. And you can just rename it. I've already done that. It's called saturation mask. So I don't need to save it again. But once you've saved it, what that allows you to do, if I just delete this one, is uh, when you add a selective color, you can just select it from the presets here. So now I've got a saturation mask. So how can we use this? Well, what we need to do is uh, come over into the channels panel, command or control on the keyboard, and click the RGB channel. Very similar to luminosity masking, but this time working with saturation. Uh, come back over into layers and now you can add this as a mask to any adjustment layer you want but in this instance we're going to be adding it to a hue saturation adjustment layer and then we can just turn this one off here now you've got this anyway we've got this hue saturation adjustment layer what we can do is increase the saturation slider move it towards the right and you'll see that it's these colors in the foreground that are becoming more saturated also the background a little bit because they are saturated also. But yeah, none of this uh, middle ground and yeah, the background to a lesser degree is, uh, is being affected by this increase in saturation. And so the, the benefit of doing it this way is that, you know, like I said, you can control where the saturation is being added, you know, when you want it to be added to the already saturated colors. Uh, and it's, probably a bit easier than trying to mask in via any other method uh, into those saturated areas. Because when you create a luminosity mask, for example, it's looking at the light values, not the saturation alone. So, you know, you'll be able to create a mask that 
can increase the saturation in the bright areas or the dark areas or the midtones, but not necessarily the most saturated colours. If you want to learn more about creating depth and separation in your landscape images, you can download my free essential guide at dynamiclandscapeguide.com or by visiting the link in the description and the pinned comment.